stop sign, right? There's actually two stop signs because the one stop sign is hard to see. Okay, we check our mirror, make sure we're not going to get rear-ended. We're starting to slow down. And where would we stop, Mandy? We stop before the stop line. Yeah. The first white car. Good. All right. Let me look both ways. It looks good. And off we go. Good. All right. Remember never to trust just because it's a four-way stop. Some people don't uh, stop, right? So just like if you were walking across the street, you'd look both ways. You have to do that when you're in a car as well. Okay. I'm going to turn right here. So yeah. one of the things we're doing is checking our mirror and our blind spot to make sure there's no cyclists there because you, you saw that that bike route was ending, right? Yes. Right. So we stop behind the line. Can we turn right on the red light? Uh, we can on this intersection yep, because sure there's can. no There's no sign. Yeah. So what are we going to do now? So we roll forward. Yeah, we're going to roll forward. There's no pedestrians. We're going to creep the car up a little bit. We're looking okay. both ways. Hard roll to see with traffic. that hedge. Yeah. Okay. Right check your blinds. Yep. Yeah. And then right up to speed. Okay. There's a sign. Yeah. So you know you have to be moving your eyes, right? You can't just stare straight down the road. Okay, so we're always looking ahead, but we're always glancing. Remember from uh, from uh, online course, okay? Uh, the fact that, you know, you sort of have a pattern that you use, okay? So you're kind of looking off to the right, you know, almost like sort of, in this case, you know, sort of off into the bush there a little bit and like front lawn to front lawn type thing, okay? But we're also glancing at our mirror every so often, right? Ministry of Transportation says every 10 seconds, you could actually do it a little bit more than that. Yes. Yeah. You always want to have a, you always want to have an idea of what's going on around the vehicle. Okay. You always want to have like that, that awareness. Yes. Okay. okay. So we're checking our blind spot. Why would we check our blind spot? There's a solid yellow line there. Why, why is that necessary? Um, well, there's no physical separation, so there yeah. could be another car. Sure. What if some guy on a motorcycle decided he was going to pass you at that point or, or whatever, right? Yes. And I would say the other thing is, too, is that it establishes a habit, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So the fact is, is that whenever you're moving your car out of your lane, that you're always you're always looking, right? So as we're sitting here, what are we doing? Uh, well, we are looking at the rear uh, view mirror, yeah. right? So just yeah. to be uh, aware of the traffic behind. Yeah. Before yeah. now, the light on screen, light you're going to quickly screen. scan both yeah. sides. There's pedestrian the crossing, sure. you go in the intersection. Yeah, so it's kind of a circle, right? Checking the light, checking the traffic, looking for pedestrians, looking in there, uh, taking a quick glance in the rear view mirror. Again, we're looking ahead. We're watching for a gap in the traffic, right? Yes. We're watching as well for uh, um and the now I see a gap here, yeah. so we and check our blind spot. Yeah. And then off we go. Yeah. And we notice that the speed's 60 speed again, so we want to get right up to that flow of the traffic. Okay, and then once you're up there, you take a quick glance in that mirror again. Because we're on a new road, so we need, again, to know what's behind us now, right? It's a new picture. Yes. You can notice the sign there, right? You notice the, the, uh, the sign to tell you the state of the right-hand side of the concrete barrier? Yes. And you also have the, the yellow and black which Ashley was telling you to do the same thing. You can see there's another one there. Yes. Okay, so that, that where the direction sort of that the the lines are traveling downward, mm -hmm. that's the side that you want to pass on. You don't want to be on the other side of that. Yes. Um, because you're going to be on the wrong side of the road and you have no way to get um, to get to the right side of the road. So if the lines are pointing down to the right, yeah. you stay on the right you side. You stay on the right hand side, yeah. If you were going in a tunnel, you might have those signs on both sides and they would both be telling you to take the tunnel and not drive actually into the side of the tunnel, right? Yes. I know it sounds weird, but you know, you know, they're there for a reason, right? Yeah. Common sense would say you don't, you know, you take the, the tunnel, not not the side of the hill, but sometimes people are confused, I guess. Yeah. As we're driving down this road, you notice that there's a turn lane. We, we're going straight, so we want to stay to this side too, right? And you yes. want to check your mirror because you never know when somebody's going to decide to try to pass you there. People do silly things. So we're coming up to a set of lights here. Uh, the light's green, but it's been green for a while. So what would you be worried about? Uh, light changing to yeah. amber. Yeah. So we're going to check. We're past that point of no return that we call it. Right. Yes. Again, right? A lot of this stuff was taken up in the online course. You might not remember all of it. So point of no return is is when you're approaching a stale green light, here's another one in front of us, right? We're gonna make it to we're gonna make a decision. 
based on our speed, um, the road surface, which is dry today, it's fairly warm. And actually what's behind us as well, right? So if you check that mirror, Right? There is a truck behind us. If we jammed on the brakes and he was too close, he could rear end us, right? Yes. So imagine if that was a transport truck, 80,000 pound transport truck. He's got a lot more energy in that truck if he had to stop it, right? Yes. So, yeah, we want to take that into consideration too. Okay. So, the biggest factor would always be your speed. The faster you're going, the longer it's going to take you to stop. And what about space here? So we're, we're pulling up behind this vehicle. So, um, yeah, so I can see the back wheels of that car yeah. on the ground. Yeah, so we want to uh, yeah. distance. Yeah. So why do we want to leave that distance? Um, just in case, um, you know, if um, there's another car coming up mm -hmm. too fast, so we have space to move forward, mm -hmm. or we also have space to actually change lane if we have to change exactly. lane. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, you know, your mom and dad might say, well, the reason why we're doing that is because if we got hit from behind, we don't want to get pushed into the car in front of us and kind of sandwiched, which is true, okay? You can imagine whiplash is bad enough. You imagine having whiplash in both directions, okay? That would be, that would be, uh, you know, possibly like a life-changing injury. So, uh, what, what we're also concerned about is the fact that what if we're being more proactive? Remember proactive from the course, yes. right? So, so we're we're monitoring that mirror as we're sitting there because I can tell you statistically, most people who do get rear-ended get rear-ended just sitting there minding their own business, waiting for a light. And uh, and yeah, so if we noticed we were about to get rear-ended, we're going to try to get out of the way, okay? And we've left ourselves some room in order to do that. You can come up with all the plans you want if you don't have any room to execute that maneuver, then. You know that, right? The, 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 on your road test especially, right, you want to stay in the right-hand lane as much as possible. Yes. So if you make a left turn and you find yourself in the left lane, they would expect you to make a lane change, change lane. to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I live in a city, and we know that sometimes that's just not practical, right? Yes. Um, a lot of it may depend. Maybe we're turning left at the next intersection. So, and we know it's a busy area. If we don't get over there early, we're never going to be able to make it, especially with construction. So we might be in the left-hand lane uh, because it just makes more sense. Uh, also because we can see better, things like that. Right? Yep. So we're going to signal to the right. Now, this is kind of strange. That guy's doing something wrong, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, already in the bicycle okay, lane. Okay, so yeah. Now, if the bicycle lane lines were broken, that would allow us in there. Yes. But because that's a solid white line, we're not supposed to be in there like he is, okay? Um, of course, now, he's got an Alberta license plate. So maybe, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying, maybe he's not familiar with the city or mm -hmm. maybe where he comes from in Alberta, they don't have bike lanes. I don't know. That doesn't give him an excuse for it legally, but, you know... I'm sure one day when you're driving, you'll be somewhere where things are a little bit different and you're really not sure how things are going, right? Yes. You, you can see a sign up here, too, that's telling you um, that you need to yield to the cyclist. So you really have to watch. So mm -hmm. I, I would be checking my mirror a lot. Um, it's fall, so you're not going to get as many cyclists, but in the summertime, it's, it's going to be busy. Okay. Okay. And we're watching. We've got a red light. You see the people over there got an advanced light to make their left turn. So the red light and the green arrow. Yes. So how are you going to handle this with this solid line? Um, well, when the light turns green, mm -hmm. um, I will check if the line will actually change to broken white. Yeah. If not, yeah. then I will stay in this lane and I have to do shoulder check. Yeah. Now yeah. the line is yeah. broken so white. Checking so that shoulder Good. check. Yeah. Check. And then we move over. There's no pedestrians yeah. here. And then and we're going to go. There's another bicycle lane. Yeah. So we go into this lane. Yeah, a very short one, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we wouldn't want to turn into the bike lane. We want to turn into the first lane that's traveling in our direction. Yes. Okay. And now I see speed limit sign 60. Yeah. Good. So, so this light will change any second. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah, good. So, all right. So, you hadn't even made that point in no return decision yet, which means that, you know, we're going to stop, right? But we'd always check our mirror. Yes. Anytime your foot's going for the brake, you should be checking that mirror, right? Yes. All right. You should be checking it routinely as you're driving down the road. Um, you should check it after you turn on to a new road. Okay. Yeah. Um, it just lessens the fact that um, uh, you're going to get rear-ended. I always like to 
say it's kind of like, okay, if you've ever played sports like soccer or hockey or something like that, it's having that sort of 360 degree awareness, right? I mean, you don't need to know what color the person's eyes are behind or beside you or whatever, right? But you know that there's somebody there in your blind spot or they're going through your blind spot, that type of thing, okay? So, you know, I, I could literally just sort of stop time and I could say, okay, what's going on around you? And you can say, well, there's a red car and he's coming through my blind spot. There he is, mm -hmm. you know, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah. So you really have a, a good awareness. And once you can do that, lane changes will be a lot easier, okay? If you're watching your parents or somebody make lane changes and you're like, why don't they struggle like I do? I mean, it's the fact that that you know they are very aware of what's going on around them and then when they go to make their lane change they're just kind of double checking okay, okay. yeah